There's a lot of energy stored in the strong winds and even in the breezes. Tapping into this energy can help us in solving our energy crisis without polluting our air. Wind turbines are the special devices that can convert wind energy into electrical energy. Arrays of wind turbines that are called as wind farms are becoming popular as wind energy is a clean, renewable form of energy. These turbines have long blades that are designed to rotate with very little resistance for an efficient conversion of energy, so they are preferred to be light in weight. But they must also be strong enough to withstand the winds that are subjected to, especially at those heights. So, they are generally made of composite materials that have higher strength to weight ratio. Along with the choice of the material, turbine blades are usually hollow to maintain the optimal weight. As a result, they are prone to buckling under strong loads. In this example, let's study the buckling loads of one such design of a wind turbine. We'll start with a hollow tube and see if there's a need to improve its design. The blade is assumed to be made of an epoxy carbon woven composite. So it's defined as orthotropic elastic material. Here are the material properties for this material. First, we'll perform a static analysis with the nominal pressure acting as the load. This solution is then used to perform an eigenvalue analysis to calculate the buckling modes. We apply a nominal pressure of 1.9 psi distributed on one side of the blade to mimic the wind load. The other end of the blade is fixed in all directions. We'll obtain the load multiplier and their corresponding mode shapes from the eigenvalue analysis. We can see that all the modes are indicating buckling through thickness of the blade. So this analysis predicts that the lowest load at which the structure buckles is in mode 3 at a load of 0.524 times the nominal load. We can also plot the strain energy density plots from this analysis and see that the energy is accumulated along the thickness regions. This indicates that the blade is weakest along its thickness direction and can use some stiffeners to improve the resistance to buckling. So based on that analysis, let's add some stiffeners along its length in order to increase the load at which it buckles. Now let's perform a similar analysis with this new design. Here are the load multipliers for the new design. We can see that they have almost doubled from the previous design, which implies that adding those stiffeners has indeed improved the buckling performance of the blade. If we want to further improve its design, once again, we can look at the strain energy plots. This time, we can see that this region can use some reinforcement to avoid buckling. Earlier, we mentioned that a linear buckling analysis is cost effective, but it's a conservative estimate. So the actual buckling load may be lower than the predicted one. So let's perform a nonlinear buckling analysis on this structure to get a more accurate estimate. This time, let's perform a static analysis using large deformation theory and apply a pressure load of 3 psi which is close to the load multiplier times the nominal load from previous case. As we perform newton raphson iterations to solve this problem, we'll notice that as the solution approaches about 97% of the load, the solution fails to converge and would not move forward for any changes to load increment. This is an indicator that the structure is approaching its buckling load. So, Using the nonlinear analysis, we are able to predict that.
that it buckles at a load of 2.91 psi. This way, one can perform both a linear and a nonlinear buckling analysis to study at what loads does a structure undergo buckling.